Hello, and welcome to this week's Ingenuity Challenge. My name is Margarita, and I am a teacher at the Lawrence Hall of Science. If you want more content like this, please like this video and subscribe, and give us a thumbs up so we know what's working. Today, we are going to be learning about pivots and motion by designing and building one of these. This is my penguin. If you want the design for this penguin, you can find it in the activity sheet in the description box below. And this activity has a lot of different parts to it, so I encourage you to pause, rewind, fast forward as many times as you need during this video. And you don't have to build a penguin if you don't want to. You can actually build anything that you want. It could be anything that has moving parts that you want to demonstrate. And I hope this video helps you figure out how to do that. And now that I mention it, how do you think I'm getting my penguin's wings to move? And I'll tell you, but first, let's talk materials. Of the activity sheet. Take a little time to look it over. And while you're doing that, I challenge you to try to make this activity work with the items that you already have at home. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just try your best. Let's take a look at the materials I used. I have page two of the activity sheet so that I can outline the penguin on the cardboard. I have some cardboard. You may need a parent or older sibling to help you cut out the cardboard. Then we have some scissors, glue, markers, various pieces of colorful paper, and our cutout. Then we have our hole punching tools. If you have a hole puncher, then great. If not, I used a pen tip and the end of a paintbrush. You'll see me demonstrate this further along in the video. The next thing you'll need are brass fasteners. You can use pipe cleaners or rubber bands and straws instead. I didn't have these, so I actually used twist ties, like the kinds you'd find on a bread bag. You'll need about seven to 10 of these. And lastly, you'll need something to decorate your design. I used tissue paper and colorful index cards. Now let's begin. The first thing you'll need is an outline for your design. My printer wasn't working, so I used a tablet screen to trace the pieces that I needed. As you watch me go through this activity, I'd really like you to think about these four questions. You can find them in the activity worksheet. One, which part of your design do you want to move? Two, how can you make each part of your design move? Three, how should each part of your design be connected? And lastly, the most important part of this activity, the lever. And four, where should you attach the lever to your design? The size and shape of your lever will all depend on how you decide you want each part of your mechanism to be connected. My lever is just slightly longer than the main part of my design. So think about these questions as you're designing your own mechanism. I'll also be going through some vocabulary words, so make sure to look out for those too. So let's talk pivot points. These pivot points help you decide what part of your design you'd like to move. Where you put them is crucial to how you're connecting each part of the mechanism. So, if you're making an animal or a person, think which parts of the body you want to move. Will it be the arm? Will it be the leg? Do you want the head to move? You could even do an illustration of something like water. It might look something like this. How could you get these two parts to work together? Where might you add pivot points on this design? And where you place your pivot points is crucial to how you want your design to work. Okay, so 
So now that we have our outline, we can use it to cut out our cardboard. You might ask someone to help you here. Cardboard can be tricky to cut through. Also, while you're tracing the design onto the cardboard, don't forget to pinpoint where you want your pivot points to be. Now you can start hole punching. I didn't have a hole puncher, but that's okay. I used a pen point and a paintbrush because it has a rounded end. Notice what I'm doing here. I used the pen to start the initial puncture and then I switched over to the paintbrush and pushed it through. If you're using a pencil or pen, please be careful. You don't want to poke yourself in the hand. It's much safer to make an initial puncture and then switch to something with a rounded edge. we can begin to put it all together. This is a good time to ask, will there be any constraints? Where will the fixed pivots be? And where would you find the floating pivots? Now, how do we connect all the parts together? As you watch me, you might notice that I decided it was easiest to work with the back side of the mechanism facing me. I found this was the best way to fasten the twist ties. If you're using twist ties or pipe cleaners, you want the twisted end to be on the back. That way when you decorate it, it won't interfere with your decorations. can work on lever placement. Here, you'll notice me working through where I'm going to fasten my moving parts. At this point, I've already decided that the head and feet are constrained to the body. This means that the movement of these parts are limited to its single point. Then, I had to figure out how to connect the wings to my lever. Since these are my moving parts, this is also where I have to decide where to put my fixed pivots and floating pivots. After trying out a couple of different placements, I decided that the pivot points on the very top of my wings were not working how I wanted them to. So, I placed the wings over the top of my lever, and then I measured where I wanted the new pivot points to be. Then, I marked it with an X. I've written the letters A and B to keep track of where I want my fixed pivots and floating pivots. Point A is where I'm placing my fixed pivot. The fixed pivot is connected to the main part of my design, the body. Point B is where I'm placing the floating pivot. It's floating because it's not connected to the body. It's only connected to the lever and the wings. In fact, for this particular design, the lever is not connected to the body at all, only the wings. Like I mentioned before, this may change depending on your design and which parts you want to move. Here, I'm measuring where I'm going to punch out the pivot points on my lever. These are going to be my floating pivot points. Here's a close up of each part placed next to one another. Now I can start putting together the pieces with my twist ties. 
Here I'm just demonstrating where I'm going to connect each twist tie. Now I can start working on my floating pivot. Remember, it's called a floating pivot because it won't be connected to the main body. So I line up each point B and then I begin to tie them together. I found that it was easiest to connect the wings to the lever first. Then I could work on connecting the lever and wings to the body. Also, having your moving part separated from the main body can also help you understand exactly how you want your moving part to work. And then seeing them together like this should give you a good idea of what your moving part will look like in action. And now, the fixed pivot. This part was a little bit tricky. You'll notice here, I lined up pivot point A to the pivot point on the body. Then, I put one end of the twist tie through the front and then I folded the other end of the wire around the body and then under the wing. And this is what it looks like almost completed. Now we get to test our inputs and outputs. Now is a good time to ask, how will you push on your lever to get the movement that you want? And what do you think the actual movement will be? And with that, my friends, we're pretty much done. Let's see a little close up of the mechanism and its moving parts. Now, all that's left to do our decorations. And that's it. Thank you so much, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for sticking around for the duration of this video. I know it was a lot. We talked about so many different things. We learned how to create movement by planning and connecting different parts together. We learned how to use our floating pivots and how to use fixed pivots to create the movement that we want in our design. And I hope that you're going to try this activity again with another design and maybe share it with a friend. If you liked this video, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And thank you so much. Again, my name is Margarita and this is Lawrence at Home. Bye!